Our final thing for scientific notation is adding and subtracting different scientific notation numbers. This is a quick video for hints. Um, spoiler, not uh, neither of these hints or suggestions um, are always going to be easy. Um, some of them might have some conversion processes at the end. It's going to depend on the problem of which one I think is going to be the easiest one. But finding something that makes sense for you is going to be the most important thing. So let's dive in. We have our problem at the very beginning. We're taking two scientific notations that we're adding together. I have 3.92 times 10 to the fourth, and I'm adding that to 8.72 times 10 to the fifth. Um, we can't just add exponents together. We can't just add the numbers together. One, because we're taking this decimal and moving it four spaces to the right, meaning we're going to get into, I'm thinking, one, two, three, four, um, and actually, I'm giving a hint away about how to convert these. We're getting into seeing these massive numbers, and sometimes all the place values don't line up. So actually, let's dive in before I get too far. Um, two ways to con or two ways to add these together. You can either convert both of them to st standard notation and then add them together like you would a gigantic addition problem. Or you can convert them to the same exponent and then add together because then you're moving the same place value anyway. So I'm going to start with the standard, excuse me, the standard notation version, because that's kind of what I started at the beginning. And so I'm just going to start with 3.92. That's a terrible color for this background color. 3.92 times 10 to the fourth. I'm going to convert it to standard notation, and I'm going to move one spot, two spots, three spots, four spots with two zeros in. So I'm just going to rewrite as not three point three nine two zero zero. Off again. There we go. Three nine two. Zero, 0, and I'm going to write that as 39,200. Then my other number was 8.72 times 10 to the 5th. Can't see my number up there. 10 to the 5th, yep. And so now when I convert that, um, I'm going to start at 8.72, 1 spot, 2 spots, 3 spots, 4 spots, 5 spots, 0, 0, 0. I have 8, 7, 2, 0, 0, 0, 872,000. So now if I'm going to add these together, now I can just stack up those two um, standard notation numbers and then add them together. So I have more digits in the second number that's going to go on top, 872000. I have five digits in my other number, so I'm going to again start lining them up from the right moving left, 00293. I'm going to add them together, 00211 carry 11 carry 9. So now I'm left with um, 911,200. And now I'm just going to simply write that in scientific notation, place my decimal point in between my first uh, to get a number between 1 and 10. So I'm going to place it there to get 9.112. And then in order to actually end at this same number that I got it for my answer, I need to move one spot, two spots, three spots, four spots, five spots. So that's times 10 to the fifth. That's one way we can get to an answer. We'll do this. Uh, we'll end up with the exact same answer with a different method. Um, so here we just converted to both standard notation numbers and added them together, and then wrote it in scientific notation. Here we're going to convert the to the same exponent, then just add the bases together, and then by the time our, we're done, we're going to have the same exponent anyway. What's going to be easier for me? I think I'm going to prefer to keep to write both of them in ten to the fifth. Nope, in ten to the yeah, I'm going to go 10 to the 5th. So, and you can decide which one you want to convert to. But I'm going to convert this number to 10 to the 5th. So what I need to know is I need to know that in this number, I'm moving the decimal space four spaces to the right. If I was going to end up at the exact same number, but write this as 10 to the 5th, then I would just need to slide my decimal point over one more to the left. Because now if I move this decimal point five spaces to the right, I'm going to get the exact same number as the one above. And let's take a look at that really quick. 3.92, 1, 2, 3, 4 for that one. I end up at uh, 39,200. If I move over five spots to the right with this number down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I end up with 39200, 0, 0, 39,200. Now I have, if I can, if, um, if I consider this 0. 0.392 times 10 to the fifth, I now have it in 10 to the fifth form. I can then add it to this number up here because that's in 10 to the fifth form. And so it's still talking about the same decimal movements. So I'm just going to write that number down again, 8.72 times 10 to the fifth. And now if I'm adding these together, again, this being added with this, 
Um, since I have my decimal movements happening in the exact same spacing, the exact same direction, I can just simply add my two bases together. So I'm just going to line my decimals. I'm going to do this in black over here, 8.72 plus 0 0.392. And again, when we're adding decimals, add the decimals and line those decimals up. I can tack on a 0 there as a space saver. 2 plus 0 is 0. 9 plus 2 is 11. Carry the 1. Um, 3 plus 7 is 10, plus 1 is 11, carry the 1, 0 plus 8 plus 1 is 9, and I just bring my decimal straight down, 9.112, and remember that was times 10 to the 5th. So if that's times 10 to the 5th, I have my um, a number in between 1 and 10, and I have it in scientific notation. As we zoom back out, it was the exact same answer that we got over here as well. So we have two different ways. We could have either converted um, to the same base, or excuse me, to the same exponent, so here I had them both as 10 to the 5th, or I could um, convert them both to standard notation, add them, and then convert back. Next one we're going to take a look at is a subtraction problem, and we're going to look at the exact same ways. So converting to standard, converting to the same exponent, but this time with subtraction. Subtraction gets a little hairier because we do have some of those borrowing tools that we need. So here are two subtraction problems. 3.98 times 10 to the negative 4th minus 8.92 times 10 to the negative 6th. For the first one, I'm going to convert both numbers to standard notation. And this is to the negative fourth, so I'm just going to move my decimal four spots to the left. One, two, three, and four. And in order to do so, i got to add in those three zeros into that space. Remember, it's four decimal places, not four zeros that I'm adding. Four decimal places I'm moving. So now my standard notation number is 0 .000398. For my other number that I need to convert to standard notation, it was 8.92, and I was taking that times 10 to the negative 6th. So that's 6 spots to the left there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And zeros in between. So here, after moving my decimal 6 spaces, I need to fill in with 5 zeros. So my answer was 5, 8, 9, 2. Now, this is where it gets a little bit messy. I need to subtract these. If I was subtracting these, I need to line up my decimals. So if I'm going to line up my decimals, I'm going to start with... Um, actually, it doesn't really matter which one we start with because we want to keep common spaces. So um, I'm going to look at my larger number. And here I have... Actually, I'm going to put that one on top. Since I have um, value in the 10,000th place, I'm going to put that one on the top. 0, 0, 0, 3, 9, 8. I'm going to put the second number on the bottom. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And make sure I'm lining up all my decimal values, 8, 9, 2. Now I need to subtract them. This is where it gets a little messy. In these other space values, I'm just going to add zeros because I can keep adding zeros all I'd like. Now I need to do some active, active borrowing. So I need to turn my last number in order to get value there. So I need to borrow from the 8, turn that to a 10, borrow to make a 9, make that a 10. 10 minus 2 is 8, 9 minus 9 is 0, 7 minus 8 can't do, have to borrow. 17 minus 8 is 9, 8 minus 0 is 0, 3 minus 0 is 3, 0, 0, 0, decimal point. There's my answer, but I need to write it in scientific notation. So I'm going to put my, an or my decimal point there, 3.8908. In order to, for it to be totally accurate, I would need to move my decimal 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left, so times 10 to the negative fourth. We'll take a look with the other way to see if that saves a little bit of time and saves a little bit of process since we know we won't have to convert back to scientific notation at the end. So we're going to convert to the same exponent. Since I'm moving to the left, um, I think it's going to be easier for me to convert to the negative sixth. Again, you can convert either way, but I'm going to convert to the negative sixth exponent. So that means I'm going to keep this one the same, but I need to convert 3.98 times 10 to the negative fourth. I need to make that equal to the negative sixth. So if we think about what that means, this uh, decimal needs to move to the left four spaces. If I want this exact same number, but I want the decimal to move six spaces to the left, and that means I need to give it an extra two spaces of wiggle room. So that'd be 398 times 10 to the negative sixth. And we take a look at that really quick. 3.98 times 10 to the negative fourth. 1, 2, 3, 4, with 1, 2, 3 zeros. Th 300, the terrible color, 398 times 10 to the negative 6th. 
would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Decimal there, one, two, three zeros. Three zeros, three zeros, I get the exact same number. So now I just slid my decimal over so that once I convert, I would get the same number, but now I'm into the negative sixth. So now since I have both of these numbers in the negative sixth, I can just subtract away um, my bases. So if I have a base of 8.92 and a base of 30, 398, I'm going to put the larger base on top, 398, and put the bottom or the lower base on the bottom, but I need to line up my decimal values. There is no decimal here, so I'm just going to place one really quick so I can line them up. 8.92. Since I'm lining up my decimals, I'm going to put in some space savers just by without changing the value of the number. Now I'm going to subtract. I need to borrow. So I care, or borrow from this 8 to get 7. That makes this 10 to 9 to borrow one more to get 10 there. 10 minus 2 is 8. 9 minus 9 is 0. 7 minus 8 can't do. Have to borrow. Make that 17. 17 minus 8 is 9. 8 minus 0 is 8. 3 minus 0 is 3. Bring my decimal straight down. Now, I have an answer of 389.08 times 10 to the negative sixth. However, I don't have a good scientific notation number. I need that number to be between 1 and 10, so I need my decimal to go there. If I was putting it there, my original problem says move this decimal space 6 to the left. I'm going to move it 2 to the left to get it into scientific notation place. So now I'm at 3.89. I needed to move it six to the left. I moved it already two to the left. That means I still have four more to go. So times 10 to the negative fourth. There is my final answer there. We look to compare 3.8908. Now I didn't get the exact same number, but holy cow, was that close. So I was off by several thousandths. Oh no, I have it. I just forgot to bring down my other two dis di di excuse me, digits. I forgot to bring those straight down in my answer. 3.8908 times 10 to the negative 4, 3.8908 times 10 to the negative 4th, exact same. The processes are hard, the processes are long and complex and a lot of conversions. Either convert totally to standard or convert to the same exponent. You may need to convert back at the end, but that's our process with our new stuff. Good luck.